Hello again. Welcome back to one more day of daily Bible study. This week, we're in the Gospel according to Matthew. We're in chapter 27, and we're going to pick up in verse 27. And this is one of those passages that the passage is relatively short, uh, and I don't necessarily know that I have a whole lot to say about it, other than that it's vitally important that we sit with what this looks like. Um, before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, we thank you that you are here with us. That, Lord, even when we behave as badly as the people um, in this passage, that, Lord, you have still loved us with a love that will not let us go. Uh, Lord, when we realize, when we have the moments where we behave all too much like these folks, uh, Lord, don't let us be buried in our shame. But, Lord, re remind us uh, that your mercies uh, embrace us. Lord, help us to run to you rather than from you. Uh, Lord, we ask you to be with us during this time. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, Pilate's handed Jesus over to be crucified. And in many ways, once that moment has happened, there, there is no more earthly hope for Jesus, uh, which we know that he understood going into all this. But it's really at that moment where things have kind of moved along. And we read, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And for twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. After they had mocked him, they took the scarlet robe off of him, put his own garments back on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they were coming out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon, whom they pressed into service to bear the cross. Um, so they... they uh, they give him a robe, they put a reed in his right hand, they put a crown of thorns on them, and they sarcastically treat him as a king. They're saying, hail king of the Jews. You know, I believe it was earlier, they, they made a comment, you know, yeah, prophesy to us, uh, you Christ, who is the one who hit you? And so they've made a mockery of him as a prophet, they're making a mockery of him as a king. And yet at the same time, that's, that's who he is. You know, and so they, they put a scarlet robe on him. They, they, so, so, I mean, where do they have a scarlet robe to do this from? And it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, a little bit like, it's a little parallel to the story of the triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, where it's almost a little bit of a parody of, um, of a king entering triumphantly into their capital city. You know, and instead of being on a horse, Jesus is on a donkey. Instead of waving banners, there are palm branches. And yet it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a parody, you know, that it's meant to call to mind these things, and yet it is a good-natured parody. You know, it is, um, you know, it's a sense of we can't do, we can't be a real royal procession, so we're going to do the best we can, even if it comes off looking a little bit silly. You know, this is a much more sinister parody of this idea of we are going to give you something like the trappings. A real robe, interestingly. A real robe. We're going to give you a reed instead of a scepter. And we're going to give you a crown, but it's going to be made of thorns. And we're going to press it into your head. Um, and they spit on him and they, they take the reed and begin to beat him on the head, presumably with the reed, you know, the very same scepter. You know, the symbol of your power, we're, you know, which is we're making fun of it anyway, but then we're going to use it to abuse you. Um, and uh, we're, oh yeah, you got a crown, but it's a crown that hurts. It's a crown that's, that's, that's a punishment on you. And um, that incredible ability to not just be cruel, to not just be violent, but to be so sarcastic and to be so overtly mean-spirited about it. It's one thing to crucify Jesus. It's something else altogether to make it this mocking display. Um, and I think what that's really interesting because it's like there's, there's, um, you know, there's a tendency to say here, here is a situation that we have done what we believe to be right. You know, I, I mean, without necessarily, I mean, in other situations. Yeah, I've been struck recently by a few things where it's like um, two different approaches to an issue. You know, one of them in to say, you know, something is a tragic situation, but we did what we had to do. It was the right thing to do, but we're sad that it came to it. And so we lament it, we acknowledge it, and we try to move on with as much integrity as we can. And then there's somebody else who says, yeah, hooray, new day, let's you know, stick it to those other people and all the rest. And I just find those two responses to be so different that it's one thing to say, like even, even if someone was the, the, the state executioner you know, for the Roman government and says, I have no choice, it is my job, I must execute justice as dictated to me, not according to my independent judgment, to crucify this man. It's one thing to do that. It's something else to do it with glee, uh, with mean-spirited. And I think that, you know, um, 
that's the part that I think is really an indictment here. You know, it's it's I I, I am I am less grieved by the fact that uh, these soldiers go along with these things that 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 maybe they couldn't have helped that maybe they were not in a position where they had any power or any real authority in this situation uh, that perhaps if they had refused maybe they would have been crucified too or punished in some other significant way but the the mean spirited glee that they take is really what breaks my heart not least because I think it exposes in my own heart and the hearts of other people. This idea of, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're not just broken. We are sometimes gleefully broken. Uh, we're not just alienated from God. We rejoice sometimes in our alienation from God. We rejoice in our own choosing of our own uh, future in a way that is against God. And I think sometimes we take joy in that or that we rejoice when somebody else displays that. And we, we pretend that it's something like strength when in fact it is a parody of strength rather than being the real thing. And I just, I have so many feelings when it comes to this crucifixion narrative, um, which is part of why on, on, on Good Friday, oftentimes, you know, our, our liturgy ends up being taken up with mostly a lot of scripture reading because I think we should sit with it. At least once a year, we should sit with this narrative and, and let it wash over us and let it challenge us and let us sit with the fact that we are bound to these soldiers by our common humanity. Um, and perhaps we would not do outwardly what they do, but we should be aware of the fact we may do it inwardly in ways that we don't always uh, realize. Well, in any case, uh, with that kind of down note, uh, you know, today, that's all for today and that's all for this week. Come back next week, we'll pick up with the crucifixion. We, we may come close uh, to finishing up the Gospel according to Matthew. If not, if not next week, we'll be very close to being done by the end of next week. Have a good day.